going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for joining me today. We're going to talk about the PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, this piece of hardware is about to be released. It's just a matter of time. We're already in November and it's right here. There are a lot of gamers who are excited about the prospect of playing high fidelity games on 4K TVs, PlayStation 4 games. And for me, that's a very exciting thing. I'd like to see the power of the PlayStation 4. I want to see exactly how it compares to the PlayStation that I have now and whether or not I absolutely need to have it. Now, one thing that Sony and even Microsoft have kind of alluded to when talking about their iteration, their iteration jumping consoles, the Xbox Scorpio and the PlayStation 4 Pro, is that there'll be no man left behind. There won't be anybody playing the PlayStation 4 uh, who get left behind as far as being able to play games on the Pro. Uh, they, they said that every game on the PlayStation 4 will work on the Pro and that from my understanding, they won't be making any exclusive content for the Xbox Scorpio or the PlayStation 4 Pro. And that's one thing that I brought up during the Beastly Thoughts show. I thought it was a little, it wasn't the best news. Because basically we're playing an up res box that only does backwards compatibility. And that's pretty much it. If you have a new console, imagine if the Super Nintendo came out and all it played was Nintendo games in 16-bit. Of course it would be exciting. People would be like, wow, Mario 3 looks amazing, right? But it would have been the same game. It wouldn't have really tapped into the full power of the Super Nintendo. Imagine if the PlayStation 2 only played PlayStation 1 games. Graphically superior. You understand? You see where I'm coming from? And so with Microsoft and Xbox, they've kind of... I think that they vowed that they would only be playing games from the generation previous. And they would not set aside assets to create original IPs for the new hardware. And to me, that's a little disappointing. But the question is, will Sony start pushing PlayStation 4 exclusives soon? I'll drop a link in the description. A few confirmations of the PS4 Pro's hardware have come out, and they look quite promising. Up first, you can switch out the hard drive, as is common in most consoles. Second comes how the backwards compatibility of the PS4 is going to work. Turns out the PlayStation 4 Pro has a quote, base, end quote, and quote, pro mode, end quote, depending on what game you're playing. To do so, Sony built in a copy of the PS4 hardware into the PS4 Pro. Mark Cerny, lead architect of the PS4 Pro, told Eurogamer that, quote, We double the GPU size by essentially placing it next to a mirrored version of itself. That gives us an extremely clean way to support the existing 700 PS4 titles. We just turn off half the GPU and run it at something quite close to the original GPU, end quote. So, a PS4 title will use both chips doubling the GPU while the CPU cooperates at the same time. In addition, Sony wanted to make clear that, quote, as a mid-generation release, end quote, Sony wanted to ensure that the forward and backwards compatibility between the PS4 and PS4 Pro would be easy for developers. He added that, quote, we showed Days Gone running on PS4 Pro at the New York event. That work was small enough that a single programmer could do it. In general, our target was to keep the work needed for the PS4 Pro support to a fraction of a percent of the overall effort needed to create a game. And I believe that we have achieved that target, end quote. It seems that compatibility is a lot easier this way. With that said, we are told that the PlayStation 4 Pro is not a replacement for the PS4, and there will be no exclusive titles for the PS4 Pro. Well, I think all of us have been pretty doubtful about that. PS4 Pro is a hardware upgrade, pure and simple. It's 4K compatible, and everything is faster and shinier. This new hardware information seems to only cement that there will be PS4 Pro exclusives, not the other way around. Sure, it will allow current games to work, but eventually someone is going to make a game, probably a multiplayer game, that needs the PS4 Pro specs and will not work on the PlayStation 4. The differences are slight, but enough for a developer to consider the exclusive upgrade. However, a title exclusive to the PS4 Pro is bad in a lot of ways. First of all, it gives the game a huge loss in consumer base. As most gamers already own a PS4 and likely aren't interested in shelling out more money quite yet. Especially since the PS4 Pro isn't as big a jump in technology from the PS4 as, for example, the PS3 to the PS4 even with 4K. It is simply too early in the market to start selling 4K and HDR content on its own. HDR and 4K televisions are just beginning to rise and are still too expensive for the average consumer. The upgrade in the PS4 Pro comes in the form of PlayStation VR. This is why people will buy the console, not for 4K or HDR, but for the higher rendering the PS4 Pro provides for VR. Novelty or not, the VR will sell during the holiday and all developers are going to want a piece of that profitable cake. 
Whether these two chips seal PS4 Pro's fate as the next generation of consoles for exclusive titles is still up to Sony. However, with the upgraded hardware, it is easy to see how developers would be happy to make a bigger and better game, especially with the new technology of the PlayStation VR running more smoothly on the PS4 Pro. It's going to be very tempting for developers to push for games that simply can't run on the original PS4. This, guys, is going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen for sure. At some point in the future, a developer is going to make a game that, unfortunately, can't work on the PS4. Now look, look at the PS4 and the PS3. Games like Dying Light were all coming to the PS3, last generation systems. The developers said, that, hey, look, the, vi the vision that we have just it won't suffice on last generation systems. There are going to be developers that do the same thing, and they don't want to sully their dream by creating less than they possibly can. Come on. If you're a developer and you have a PS4 Pro with twice the power of a PS4, and you start developing on that thing, and you, you're able to tap into all this extra power and added frame rate and you know more particle effects and doing all kinds of crazy things and then you realize you can do it and then you go back to the ps4 and you're like i can't do any of this are you really going to want to take all that out of a game isn't that going to hurt your vision isn't that what your original vision was i'm just saying i think at some point sony's going to have to bite the bullet and come out and say hey look we said initially we weren't going to create exclusive content but we'd like to announce the playstation 4 pro Plus, or some kind of crazy thing they're going to announce, and these games will only work on the Pro. For gamers who are running the Pro only, and basically that's a way to, for them to shut up the PlayStation 4 gamers. Which is unfortunate, but that is iterative change. You know, iterative change shouldn't only be for the console, it might be for the game, you know? You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Sony will ever start releasing PS4 Pro exclusive content? Xbox uh, Scorpio will probably do the same thing at some point. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Be sure to give a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed the video. Join the Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, and check out BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.